Hello Year 10, welcome to this week's lesson in iteration. Let me say that again, welcome to this week's lesson in iteration. Where we will be looking at how we get the computer to do what it's best at things over and over and over again. That's why we use computational power because it's extremely good at repeating tasks. And you're going to study two ways that we can write iterations or repetitions or what we often call loops in computer science, the for and the while. Now, <coughs> bear with me you know what to do set up your you can pause the video you're going to go into your replit and set up a new replit and let's look at a little bit of theory one of the bonuses about working from home in lockdown is that in a free period i can run downstairs and i can jump on fifa and when i'm playing fifa i see iterations constantly in action and it's a good starting point to help explain the lesson well generally i'll set my half length to four minutes but that's our first type of programming loop. It's when we know exactly how many loops we want the computer to execute. If you set a game half to four or six minutes, you know exactly or the computer knows that it has to run those modules for six minutes. That's what we call a specific count. So for example, if I want to count to 10, I know how many times. If I want to do my three times tables, I know that I have to do my tables from one through to 12. So when we know exactly how many loops or iterations we need, we use a for loop. For example, the half length in FIFA. If we don't, and it has to be controlled by a condition, we call that a while loop. If you're playing FIFA or whatever computer game it is, often you'll have to, the computer will be evaluating a condition. So while your fingers in the L1 and the right trigger, you're going to have the agile dribble. While your fingers on the left trigger and R2, you're going to sprint. So it's constantly evaluating that condition. And that's what we call a condition control loop. And we're going to learn how to do both. So the first thing is I'm going to flip, you set up your rep, and I'm going to flip over and introduce you a very simple uh, structure. So the first looping structure is a for loop. And the keyword you can see in blue is for. Next comes what we call the iterator, a variable, a memory location that's going to store how many loops we're going to use. And often we just use the, the, the letter I for iterator or an integer. And it comes in conjunction with the range function. So we often write for I in range. And the range function takes three values, a starting point and an end point. And you can have an optional third one, which is an increment or either to go up or go down. But we'll look at it in a second. And all I'm going to do here is print the value that's in i, which would be the iterator. So this is going to start off with i being assigned the value zero and it's going to print it. So we'll see zero in screen. And then it's going to the next value in the range and it'll print one and it'll print two and it'll go all the way up to 10, but it'll not print 10. So boom, we run it and we get naught to nine. So in each iteration, the value of i has been changed. That's a very simple count control loop. Uh, and I can add in the third optional. I can put in a comma, put in the third parameter. So I'm going to count in threes. Only this time I'm going to finish at 30. And you can see, there we go. It's printed out the three times tables, <coughs> pardon me, from naught to, to three. So that is the basic for loop and we're back to our theory and it asks you to experiment with that, putting in the start, the end and the incrementer or it can be a negative number if we want to count down and that takes you to your first task. Boom, there you go, probably a good time to pause the video. So you're going to have three tasks and I'm going to move promptly on <coughs> while you're doing that and we're going to look at the while loop and again the while loop uses a condition and i'm going to set this up with just because i was thinking of of fifa uh, that a player eventually gets tired you know they've got lots of different attributes but one of them definitely is their energy so i'm going to set up the energy and i'm going to give it a value of 10 and that is what we call our condition and we're going to be constantly evaluating that condition within our while loop the keyword in blue is while and i'm going to say while the energy value is greater than zero now once the player's energy gets zero they collapse in a heap and that's the end of their game so when their energy is greater well what do i want to do for this simple example i'm just going to get them to print out print out a uh, player 
energy e n e r g y colon and then i'll just put in the variable now in each loop we need to change the state or we need to change the condition otherwise this will go on forever and ever watch so this is what we call a finite loop and they just crash our computer programs it goes on and it goes on and it goes on infinitely i suppose a basic a basic virus so i'm going to stop that and we need to change the state of the condition so in each iteration i'm going to decrease the player's energy player's energy equals the energy minus one and i'm going to run it now we've got 10 9 1 8 exact and then at the end of the loop outside of this indentation i'm going to say print where is too tired to continue and there we go you get the idea that we're evaluating this is our conditional we're evaluating the conditional and we're changing the state of the conditional now that's one way we can do it i'm going to show you a shorthand where we have got the decrementer operator instead of equal energy equals energy minus one i can change that and simplify it to minus equals one and it will do the exact same thing so that's just decreasing the, the variable so we're back to our lesson and that's your second task you're going to use a while loops similar to the first only counting from 10 to 0 so you're going to have to think you're going to need a condition I would probably set that condition as count count equals 10 while count is greater than what print the count and then change the count so that takes us on to our third and final part of the lesson and you're asked to write the times tables now you've seen it very simply in the for loop that you could print out for i in range oh bear with me and i could say well i want to start at not and i want to go to a 100 and it's the 10 times tables and this time just to be i'm going to change i to a different value called num because we can this time the variable is going to be printing num so when we run this after the player gets tired you can see there we go but your task isn't as simple as that you have to use an input statement which we learned about previously to ask the user what number they would like to print what times tables they would like to print out and then iterate through it so you know what to do once you've completed it your three tasks in one script copy the link put it in your teams any problems post to your team and your teacher will help good luck